or it can radiate it. That's it. It's got three main strategies in its toolkit, and they all involve killing things. This is why the medical model doesn't address the health of, of the cell. This is why the only place you're going to hear that all disease is cell disease is on the bright side. But it's, it, it's even more fundamental because all disease is cell membrane disease. And by the way, all cell membrane disease starts off with dirty, toxic, malnourished blood and suffocated, lack of oxygen blood, hypoxic blood. That's the key, folks. I don't care what your degenerative health crisis is. If you follow that simple protocol of working on the digestive system and then focusing on toxicity, which includes sugar, and making sure that the body is breathed correctly, every single health challenge that you can, ha that you can name or that you can have will begin to reverse itself. Not be cured, reverse itself. Now, I don't know, it, it, depending on how degraded or deteriorated your condition is, it may take longer or shorter, but the fact is, if you follow that simple three-step protocol, it can't get any simpler, folks. You work on digestive health. You improve detoxification, and that includes not putting toxicity in, and sugar is a major toxin. And then you breathe correctly. You breathe the body and move the body around. You oxygenate, you respirate, you ventilate, you keep things moving in the system. Every single health challenge you can name will, re will reverse itself. Not cure, but reverse itself. Because that's the body's way. All right, so we're talking hormones and fats, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin A, another misunderstood vitamin. I can't believe I still hear doctors saying that when you're pregnant, you shouldn't take vitamin A. For the life of me, I cannot believe it. If you want to, this is, this is, you know, doctors are like people too. And so they repeat things. We do it, I probably do it also. And I'm sure many of you guys do it too. We just repeat things we've heard. Well, doctors do it too. They repeat things they've heard without checking, without seeing what it's about, without seeing if it's really true. And one of those things is vitamin A, you have to stop taking vitamin A when you're pregnant. And you have to stop uh, using vitamin A cream or gel when you're pregnant. Well, first of all, even logic tells you that's silly because the fetus needs vitamin A as much as we do. In fact, more or uh, certainly as much. Because one of the roles of this incredibly important vitamin is to help cells grow and divide. And a fetus is doing both quickly. It needs extra vitamin A. 20,000 IU is a good place to be. I know that's a lot more than, than you'll hear from your doctor or from the RDA, which is, I think, four or 5,000. Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Atkins, in his book, The Vita Nutrient Solution, talks about using 100,000 IU of vitamin A. Now, I'm not saying use that much, although he said he got great results using that, that high amount. And then vitamin K, super important and very, very under underappreciated and not recognized and a little bit confusing at that. And I don't want to get too much into vitamin K because there's a lot of different things about vitamin K that can really confuse you. And we have spent some time on that. So if you're, you're interested, just, just go to the search box at brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com and check out vitamin K. Vitamin K is a activator vitamin. It activates a specific type of chemistry that's involved in blood clotting and also involved in trapping calcium, keeping calcium where it, where it needs to be. It's a little more complicated than that, but for, for our purposes, it means calcium metabolism, bone strength, and it also means keeping your blood flowing at the, at the appropriate thickness and viscosity. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. We are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Rob in Nevada. What's up, Rob? Hey, Ben. I had hey. a question for you. Sure. Um, earlier, I had a chicken pox as a kid. Yeah. And then lately, I've been having like a rash down by the tailbone. Okay. And I've been told by other people, and I haven't gone to see a doctor yet, but... uh shingles they're like oh that's uh, shingles but it's not painful at all uh that is where you would get shingles uh, you know it doesn't always hear a little 
It, it could be. It definitely could be. I can't tell you on the phone. Typically, it would hurt. Absolutely. You know, it's pretty painful. I don't know if I've ever heard of shingles that's not painful, but anything's possible, I suppose. Uh, you know, if it is, it is. Shingles is miserable. And be very grateful that it doesn't hurt, Rob, because it is a... I've seen shingles in the eye. I've seen shingles in older folks who in their 90s and they just can't wait to die and that's the kind of pain that shingles can be so you know just be thankful if it is shingles and it does sound like it is uh you know that it doesn't hurt is all i got to say a couple also, of let me give you a couple oh, we'll ideas ahead, real sorry. quick and also for listeners sure. who are dealing with shingles or who don't want to deal with shingles number one it only occurs when the immune system is suppressed or it mostly occurs when the immune system is suppressed that means from foods of course sugar is a big is a serious immune suppressant and very underappreciated as such. And then also uh, lack of nutrition, lack of nutrients, uh, things like vitamin C, anti-stress, and also important for the Im immune system. Selenium, again, anti-stress, also important for the immune system. Zinc, very important immune mineral. Uh, pretty much all your nutrients are important. Protein, very important. Essential fats, very important. You know, making sure you're taking care of your, your nutrition and then Absolutely making sure you're moving your lymph around. That's another, you know, getting around, moving your body and deep breathing as well. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt there. What were you going to say, Rob? Um, is there, um, I heard you can get like a vaccine for yeah. it at all? Yeah, yeah. I don't, it's only, it's not always effective, number one. And uh, I did a blog post on it. A couple, you might want to check, look, uh, check pharmacistben.com okay. and look, look at some stuff that I wrote about it. it the most important thing is, is that it, in order to prove its effectiveness or to demonstrate or to market its effectiveness, they had to do, they had to play games with the numbers. And it's really kind of interesting. You might want to check out, check out my blog, pharmacistben.com. Anything else? Good. Just one more thing. You talk about eating live foods. Yes. Um, but our frozen vegetables are those enzymes mm, just they're, useless? Mm, you know, that's a, actually a good question. Uh, some of the some of the activity is still there, but a lot of it's gone. To the extent it's frozen, the time it's frozen, how it was frozen, etc. It's uh, a lot of the nutritional value is gone, but it's better than a dead food for sure. Okay. Well, thank okay. you very much for your time. Okay, cool. Take sure. care. Yeah. And then, you know, when you do vegetables, if you really want to maximize the amount of nutrients you get out of those veggies, use uh, oil, use butter, use coconut oil to pull those carotenoids and, and flavonoids out of the veggies, the pigments out of the veggies. The pigments are the medicine in a vegetable. And then also, by the way, chlorophyll is unbelievably valuable as a as a detoxifying substance. You can actually get chlorophyll in a bottle at a health food store. It's great for breath issues too, by the way. A chlorophyll with parsley. Mix chlorophyll with parsley, very detoxifying. Helps kill bacteria and helps chelate toxins, pull toxins out of saliva for bad breath and also in the blood as well. All right, let's go to Robert in Colorado. What's up, Robert? Good morning, Ben, how are you? Is this skinny, Robert? Yes, this is skinnier, <laughs> Robert. How, how much? What are we at? What's the number? Keep us in, oh, keep us in the loop. Oh, about 115 this morning. Very nice. That's how much you've lost. Yes, yes. You've lost a whole human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're your much. size almost. <laughs> yeah, no, not quite, but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. All right, what's up? Okay, I'm calling about my wife. She's about 240 pounds. She broke her leg about three months ago and ended up uh, being diagnosed with soft bones. She's a meat and potatoes girl, had a hysterectomy 10 years ago or so, and doesn't like eggs unless she's deviled. You know? Well, it's more than just food. It's more than just food. She's probably not processing her nutrients correctly. That's right. for sure. So anything you could do to enhance absorption is going to be important. That's what you want to focus on. Whenever you have right. any kind of issue, hysterectomy, intestinal problems, if you're w substantially overweight, you can regard, you, you can pretty much assume that you're dealing with malnourishment. Right. So anything you could do to improve the utilization of nutrients, it's not going to be just taking nutrients for your wife. So uh, she should be doing enzymes like they're going out of style, the ultimate enzymes mm -hmm. with all meals, right? Four, five, six. There's no way you can overdose on digestive enzymes. But enough that she feels results with apple cider, apple cider vinegar and then also probiotics. Make sure she's pounding the probiotics and fermented foods as well. 
and then uh, lecithin also, as we talked about. Anything you could do to, you know, listen to the archive, what we talked about at the beginning of the program, it's going to be very yep. important for her. Anabolic, meaning building. Anabolic means building. Anabolic nutrients are fatty, okay? Electrical nutrients are watery. The B's and the C's and electrolytes, those are watery, and they're electrical. They call them electrolytes. They're for sparking things. But for building things, it's the fats and the fatty vitamins and the fatty hormones and the essential fatty acids. So that's what she's, she's got to be a builder now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. She's got to be a bodybuilder. Right. This is what she has to be. It's how you want to look at it when you're dealing with this kind of breakdown, which is so common deterioration, degradation of the body, you've got to pretend you're like a bodybuilder and do all the bodybuilding strategies. And it starts with, with the digestive system. And that means building the body up with, uh, by, by first supporting the body's ability, the intestine particularly, but also the stomach and the pancreas, everything, uh, through, uh, through supplements and foods for, uh, to a certain extent, uh, anything you could do to support the health of the digestive tract. And that means acidifying the stomach, and that means fatty nutrients, and that means uh, healing nutrients for the gut, including glucosamine and, and uh, the glucogel caps and gelatin. Right. Anything you could do, anything that helps you with arthritis, you know, if they tell you it's going to help you with your joints for arthritis, it's going to help you with your digestive system too. Things that coat the digestive tract, aloe, noni, fucoid, algae, seaweeds. You could see the slimy nature of it. When you see, right. you know what I'm talking about? The slimy yep. stuff, it's, that slimy stuff is called polysaccharide and also called proteoglycan and it stimulates growth it turns it on it, 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 it increases the thickness of the digestive lining bone soup another one so you see where we're working here bone soup is particular can be particularly helpful because it's building and it repairs the gut and it also is anti-inflammatory so yep, boiling away now what's that it's boiling away now. Good deal, Robert. So good luck with everything there. And, of course, you're mighty 90. Is every time she takes the EFA, she's upset about uh, she gets fish burps. Yeah, she's not processing. That's exactly what that means. When that happens, you're not processing. So take her, have her take the EFAs with food, okay? Right. And have right. her take them with all the, all the fat absorption things we just talked about. Right, okay? right. Okay? Ultimate Great. enzymes, Great. probiotics, et cetera. Okay, I got to go. Thanks, Great. Robert. Thank you, sir. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's go to Charlie in Texas. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side, Charlie. Charlie. Hey, Ben. Hey, How what's up, you? man? How you doing? Hey. Oh, we got we're, we got to take a break, Charlie. I'm sorry. Hang on, okay? Okay. All right, we'll uh, we'll take a quick break and come back with your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. Charlie in Texas. Charlie, you there? Yes, sir, I am. What's up, buddy? Hey, first of all, Ben, thank you so much for all that you do. You you translate complex health issues into easily understood uh, thank you. concepts. And, and again, it's, it's your knowledge and your, uh, your caring that, that it, I know thank you, you. Help so many people. I appreciate uh, that. Thank you, Charlie. I'm, I've been a uh, longevity and, and Dr. Wallach uh, prescriber, and, and uh, I've, I've been taking the products for a long, long time. Uh, recently, How long? I'm, I'm, How long is a long time? Uh, like 1993, 94. That's, that's a long time. <laughs> that qualifies. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, and like I said, I've listened to you for a long time and, and uh, you know, take a lot of the... You know, EFAs, the digestive enzymes, uh, the good deal, the, uh, the beyond tangy tangerine. Anyway, I'm 60 years old. I'm starting to see some signs of uh, you know, the typical male uh, or a male problem with the enlarged prostate. prostate. Yeah, and one you go into the bathroom multiple times in the middle yeah, of the night. And, and, and I, you know, I don't want it to become a an issue where because I know the first thing that doctors go to is let's let's you know of course get rid of it, cut it out so yeah yeah uh, or drug you or whatever yeah here's the yeah. deal the prostate is a fatty gland 
and it's your everything that a woman has to do when they're dealing with pre, uh, menopausal and perimenopausal kinds of things. That's what a guy has to do for the prostate. That it's uh, everything we just talked about with fats. The prostate is a fatty gland. Lots of fatty stuff going on in the prostate. That 